All right, we're at it again. Hitting Chactus exam number 23, printing tweet. Five more questions to help you practice and hopefully pass that CYSA exam. Let's see if I can't stump you on this one. I think I'm a little bit harder on this one. I think that uh, I think some of you might actually be a little bit impressed with me on this one. Probably not. You're probably going to do very well, and then you're like, ah, ratchet up a notch, Dr. K. Let's see if we can't stump you, though. Question number one. A cybersecurity analyst receives a report from a CERT about a newly discovered vulnerability, and we have that vulnerability number, affecting web servers running on a specific version of Apache. A vulnerability scan is conducted, and the results are shown, and it provides you those results right there. What should the analyst prioritize to mitigate the risk based on the CERT notification and scan results? What do you think on this one? Let me, uh, let me turn off my little video there. I'm having a little bit of backslash, and I feel like I'm blocking some of the questions. Let's see if we can't stop that. Let me take that off. There we go. Now you can see that. There you go. You can read it all the way through now. Let me see that. I actually let web application firewall be spelled out. Ah, I don't know what I was thinking on that one, but that's okay. That's okay. What do you guys think on this one? What do you think? I feel like I feel like it's not an overly difficult one. I feel like you've got this. I feel like you've got this. Uh, and here we have it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and dissect this one, shall we? Let's go ahead and get started on this one. Uh, we know the question, right? Uh, whenever you're looking at this, whenever you're looking at a type of question like this, make sure that you're reading what the question is actually asking. In this case, what should the analyst prioritize to mitigate the risk based on the search notification and the scan results? And we can see here that we're running host number. Uh, we see 192.168.1.100, pretty standard. Apache HTTP server 2.4.52. Vulnerability, it gives us a number, but it doesn't tell us anything else, but it does say that the severity is critical and that there is, in fact, an exploit available. So that's all the information it's giving us, which isn't a lot. It's not a lot. All right, let's see these answers, though. This is the best way to answer this type of question. A, disable all Apache services immediately to prevent exploitation. Uh, based on the limited information that we have, I'm going to say no. We don't normally disable Apache. We not normally something we do. We don't normally go off and turn things off. That's just not normally something we do. Uh, B, apply the latest security patch to an Apache server. It kind of makes sense. Hopefully, the Apache uh, 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 yeah, I can't talk. The Apache patch would fix the issue. Uh, we do see that that it does have the service. It does have a critical server, uh, critical severity attached. I cannot talk today. Uh, so definitely a good answer. C block all traffic on ADN 443. That makes no sense. That's just going to shut down our web server. And Apache is a web server, so that makes no sense whatsoever. And then D, implement a web application firewall to monitor for exploit attempts. Now, this question, based how it's written, I'm sure that you've probably figured out right now, it's either B or D. I'll give you about five seconds before we continue on. It's either B or D. Based on, based on the limited information available, because it's not giving us a lot, the only answer that makes sense is actually B, to provide that latest security patch. Nothing else makes sense. We already identified A and C don't make any sense. So why not D, implement a web application firewall? D is never the best answer. It's almost never the best answer. If there is a security patch available for the Apache server, this is what we utilize. Um, and this is a difficult question because you kind of have to know that, uh, even with the limited information they're giving you, that the best response is B. And that's, that's how this question is kind of written. B is going to be our correct answer on this one. There we go. All right, question number two, a penetration tester uses a fuzzing tool to identify vulnerabilities in a custom developed API. What is the next step the analyst should take upon identifying this result? Uh, we see our endpoint, we see a user, we see some endpoint information, a response, looks like HTTP 500 internal server error, and then trace back buffer overflow detected and function process user input. And that's where we're looking at right now. What do you think on this one? We have some good answers on this. Did I, did I, am I stumping you? Do you feel stumped on this one? That's what I really want to know. I really want to know if I stumped you. I'm going to be honest with you. I get a little bit of a kick when I stump out of people. I am going to put my face back on there because we're done past that point. And I know how much you guys love seeing my bald head. I know it blocks out vulnerabilities, but I feel like you've read that question. I feel like you've got it. Yeah, I need to fix my background. I, I moved offices, if you're wondering. And that's that's kind of why everything is all screwy in the background. But we'll get it fixed in the next video, I promise. Uh, all right, let's tackle this one. What is the next step the analyst should take upon identifying this result um let's start with a report the findings to the development team for immediate remediation i like this especially if there is in fact a buffer overflow because as a cybersecurity specialist we would want that fixed right and the best way to fix that is to have the development team 
Kind of goes through it. Very good answer. B, exploit the FFR overflow to confirm its impact on the system. No, we're not penetration testers. That's not what we do. We see a penetration tester used a fuzzing tool, but we ourselves are not a penetration tester. And so B would not be correct. C, conduct further fuzzing on other API endpoints for similar vulnerabilities. Um, yeah, that's that's something we could see doing. We I feel like that is something we would want to do because if we've used fuzzing tool to identify vulnerabilities on this custom API and this server, we probably want to make sure there's nothing else out there as well. Uh, and then D, update the fuzzing tool to ensure accurate results. Uh, it's already given us accurate results. At least we think it has. I mean, that's the real case, right? Uh, and so I think it's really between A and C. A and C are going to be the best answers for this one. I'll give you about five seconds on this one to figure out what you want to do. Do we want to go with A or do we want to go with C? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Well, if you said C, I'm afraid you'd be incorrect. It's definitely going to be A. We're going to find report those findings to the development team because it is a custom API. We're going to send it over to the development team. We're going to have them take a look at it, and we're going to hopefully get it remediated. In the meantime, in the meantime, we would usually, if we didn't already, we would throw a web application firewall on there for extra protection. Uh, we're not going to shut it down. Very rarely will we shut down something that's in production. It's not going to happen normally. Normally. Other exceptions? Yeah, there's always exceptions to rule, but normally that's not what we're going to do. Best answer in this case is going to be A. Of the available answers, A is going to be the best one. All right, question number three. An analyst is responding to a data breach incident and collects the following logs from the compromised server. The analyst is instructed to ensure proper preservation of the evidence for legal proceedings. Which of the following actions should the analyst take first? We see our date time. We see a source IP, destination port, event, unauthorized SS log, SSH login detected, and it blocked the IP right at the gates. That's what we're seeing. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a couple seconds as we're going through this one. I know, got a lot of logs on this one. I, I feel like these are more difficult because you kind of have to read the log, kind of have to read the question and then go through it. Although some of you are probably like, this is easy, Dr. K. I got this. I'm ready to take my CYSA exam and just pass that sucker. There you go. I feel like I need to be do better on my, on my, on my picture over here. It's getting in the way, right? Let me, let me hide that picture again. I need to do a better job of that. I apologize. Uh, all right, let's tackle this one. Which of the following actions should the analyst take first? Uh, let's start with A, create a forensic disk image of the server to reserve all data. Uh, maybe, maybe on this one. Uh, B, export the relevant logs and store them in a compressed encrypted archive. If we're trying to, if we're trying to ensure preservation, I could see where this could be valuable. I definitely could. Uh, C, generate a hash of the server logs to ensure integrity during analysis. Another great answer, anytime we do any type of digital forensics, we do want to make sure that we have integrity. But if we read the question, the analyst is instructed to ensure proper preservation of the evidence for legal proceedings. That's really what we're after here. Uh, which of the following should the analyst do first? I don't feel like that's answering the preservation aspect of it. That's more analyzing the integrity portion of it. And so C, probably, probably not the best answer. Uh, D, disconnect the server from the network to prevent further compromise. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, so we really have, I guess, A and B. A and B are going to be the best answers on this one. I'll give you about five seconds to decide. Do you want to create a forensic disk image or you want to export the relevant logs and store them in a compressed encrypted archive? What do you think? What do you think about this? I'll give you a little bit of time to take that guess. If you guessed A, well, you'd be correct. Did I fool you? Did I fool you? I hope I did. I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of hope I did. I hope I, I tricked you into guessing B. That was my goal. Uh, if not, then you are smart, you're intelligent, and you got it. It is definitely A, create a forensic disk image. This is going to provide an image of the entire server, and then we can preserve all that data. All that data has been preserved at that point, right? If we export the relevant logs, that's only providing the log data. That's it. And yeah, we're encrypted it, but it's just the logs. That's not a forensic image. And if we read the question, we read the question, it says the analyst is instructed to ensure proper preservation of the evidence for legal proceedings. And legal proceedings require the entire the entire image, not just the logs. And that's the problem that we run into. And so A, A is going to be our best answer on this one. I hope I fooled you. I'll be honest with you. I really do. All right, question number four. During a security assessment, the following vulnerability was discovered in the organization's payment processing system. What is the most important consideration when mitigating this vulnerability? Looks like we have an SQL injection. It allows the database modification via user input. Never a good thing. Business risk. A payment system downtime is what we're identifying. What do you think on this one? I know we got a lot of great answers on this too. 
I'll give you a couple seconds to read through these as we go through. Uh, but I want to remind you, what is the most important consideration when mitigating the vulnerability provided? Let's start with A. Let's start with A. Implement the mitigation as soon as possible, regardless of business interruption. I like I like implementing the mitigation as soon as possible. I really do. That That's my favorite. But I'm not sure about this regardless of business interruption. I think I have a problem with that part. Uh, B, schedule the mitigation during non-peak business hours to minimize disruption. I like that answer, too. I like that one better than I like A, uh, because remember, cybersecurity is a cost. It's a cost to most companies. Um, and so if the payment system is down, does it really make sense to do it that way? That's the real question. Uh, C, test the mitigation extensively in development environment before deploying. Eh, so B and C, I don't know. Uh, I think I like B better than that one. I don't know. Uh, D, notify customers about potential downtime due to the mitigation process. We're not going to notify customers. Let's be honest here. Uh, we'll send them an email. and <laughs> We'll say, hey, there might be a disruption of service. But definitely not, not the most important thing we're going to do. Uh, and so it's really, I think it's going to be between B and C. I think B and C are the only ones that it's really going to make sense, especially since we already ruled out A and then D by extension. So what is the most important consideration when mitigating this vulnerability? I'll give you about five seconds to take a guess at this one. What do you think? B or C on this one? If you said B, schedule the mitigation during non-peak business hours to minimize disruption, you're incorrect. It is C. It is C. We're going to test that mitigation extensively. Why? Why are we testing it? Because we need to make sure that it doesn't cause more harm than good. That's why. And then, then we'll deploy it. Then we'll deploy it. We're going to test it first. We don't throw things at our environment just because somebody says, oh, this is a mitigation. We need to test it first. Uh, and that's an important aspect. And that's the most critical or the most important consideration when mitigating this vulnerability. That is definitely going to be C. It's definitely going to be good to see. I'm sorry. I hope I fooled you on that one too. Yes, I'm mean. I'm mean on this one. All right, question number five. Last question for today. A company uses a third-party webhook service to trigger actions for incoming customer orders. During an audit, the following issue is identified. What is the best course of action to secure the webhook endpoint? What's the best course of action? What do you think on this one? We have our webhook. We've identified api.company.com webhook. We see the webhook lacks authentication, exposing the endpoint to spoofed requests. And the impact, of course, is unauthorized orders can be injected into the system. So what do you think on this one? Which one is going to be the best? What do you think? I think. I know. Uh, should I give you hints on this one? Or have I already ruined your your flow with uh, with leading you down the wrong trail twice? I don't know. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump at this one. During the audit, the following issue is identified. What is the best course of action to secure the webhook endpoint? Uh, restrict the webhook to accept traffic only from specific IP addresses. Uh, that could be a good answer. That could be, that could be good. I like that one. B, enable HTTPS on the webhook to ensure secure communication. I feel like that one's too easy. Especially since, I mean, if you look at, if you look at the webhook URL, it already says HTTPS on there. It already says HTTPS. I, I feel like that, we can throw that one away. I feel like that's an easy one. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, C, add an HMAC signature to validate the authenticity of the webhook request. Uh, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Do I like it better than A? Do I like it better than A? I think I might. I might like it better than A. Uh, and then D, encrypt the webhook payloads to protect the data in transit. Ooh, the data in transit. I feel like that's like HTTPS. We're already using HTTPS. And so if we're already using HTTPS, isn't it already protected in transit with the encryption? And so it's already being... I feel like that's an easy one to get rid of. I really do. So it's really between... A and C. I feel like A and C are going to be the best one. Do I like A better than C? Do I like C better than A? That's the real question. Uh, I'll give you about five seconds. I'll give you about five seconds to think about this one. Do I want to add an HMAC or do I want to restrict the webhook to accept traffic only from specific IP addresses? I'll give you about two seconds left on this one. If you said A, uh, you would be incorrect. Incorrect. It's partially effective. While we can limit the traffic, right? Because that's what we're doing, limiting the traffic. It doesn't verify the request. And since it doesn't verify the request, the attacker can spoof the source uh, and bypass the measure. And so we really need that authentication. Because if you look at the question, right? If we look at the question, it's exposing the endpoint to spoofed requests, right? It lacks authentication. What is HMAC? HMAC is hash-based message authentication code. Authentication is in the name. Again, if you know the acronyms, it almost answers the question for you. The answer is going to be C. 
it's going to be C. Did I get you on this one? What do you think? Uh, How do we do? How do we do? Do you guys feel like you got five out of five? Did you get, you know, four out of five? How many did you get? I want to know. I want to know how we did on this one. Uh, until next time, my name's Dr. K. We'll see you around. Have a good one.